بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته One of the relationship between people is mentioned in the Holy Quran more than 90 times It is that of companionship In Arabic it is Suhbah this is a higher level than friendship. Now the importance of companionship might seem insignificant to some people. However, it is vital for a human being because we are social creatures. A human being cannot live alone by himself or in solidarity. He cannot. This is very difficult for a human being. And that is why usually in prison, one of the most severe imprisonment is to put him alone. This is considered the highest step of punishment, get for it, because it's very difficult for a human being. Now, in the Arabic language, or in the Arabic culture, we have a proverb that says, As-Sahib Sahib. The companionship pulls, pulls his companion. If he's good, he will make him good. If he's bad, he'll make him bad. The Messenger وسلم, took it to an even higher level. He says that a companionship affects the person even in his religion. The Messenger وسلم, said, the close companionship, the religion of a person is the religion of his close companion. So each one of you should be careful who his companion is. It affects your religion. And this relation, by the way, continues, not in this world, in the hereafter, as we we'll mentioned by the end. Now, there are many levels for companionship. No time to elaborate on all of them, but we will speak about two of them that most people ignore or might overlook. And they are the two most important ones. The first one is your parents. Your parents are your first companions. However, with your parents, you don't have a choice. You don't have a choice to so make them good parents or bad parents. That is not in your hand. So what happens, for example, if they are bad parents? They are not worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala correctly. They disbelieve in Allah Almighty. Does that change anything in your relationship with your companionship? No. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala specifically used this word. Be their companion on good ground or with goodness. When he spoke about the parents being disbelievers and making jihad against you, trying their best, struggling against you so that you will disbelieve in God Almighty. And even then Allah Almighty mentioned them being your companions and you have to be their companions on good grounds. Goodness. Means what? Don't obey them in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and in disbelief. But the rest, the worldly matters, they're your companions. The second one is your spouses, your wives, or the husbands for the wives. This relation is something that is also very vital and very strong. Here you have a choice. Here you have a choice. But still Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned even in severe cases and when there is a dislike or hatred between them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still say to be patient and hope for the best, keep the hope alive because perhaps you might dislike something and in it Allah Almighty will make much goodness for you. It means if you are patient with them, things will turn to the best later on if you are wise. And if we will go back to our lives, most people, and many of the cases that I've seen around coming to me, throughout their life, they have thought of breaking this relationship multiple times. They come at a one hurdle. When they are patient and they overtake it, what happens later on? They get closer. Yeah, they become strong. The relationship gets bigger. They are wiser now. They are more tolerant, more understanding of each other and so on. So that is why here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used the term sahiba for the wife in the Holy Quran. 
your companionship. Yes, because you spend most time with her throughout your life. The spouses know about each other what most people on earth don't. Not even your parents, not even your children. So the relationship between the spouses is one of the strongest. And that is why Allah Almighty used the same term of companionship or sohba between them. Now what is required? What are the principles or etiquettes of dealing between companions? Many. The first one, and not surprisingly, is dialogue. Respectful dialogue. Regardless of the differences that might arise between them, and to give us an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the example of two friends. They were companions of each other. However, they were the exact opposites. This is mentioned in Surah Al-Kahf, the, the surah that you recite in Friday. Now one of them disbelieves in Allah Almighty. He is not thankful for any of the bounties that he has around you. He was very wealthy. And he was arrogant, belittling his companion, his friend. So he disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the hereafter. He's not thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He says, if, if there is a hereafter, God will give me similar to this or even better because he has given me so much in this world. So he loves me. So he'll give me more. Simple. And he has been arrogant over his companion. The other companion is the exact opposite. He is believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's very poor. He is very respectful to his companion and speaking with him or a dialogue in a very respectful manner. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned this specifically. This is the way to deal. So dialogue, respectful one, something that is very important. Second one is good speech. Speaking with them in a good manner. And giving them sincere advice. Gathering them to the goodness. What benefits them in this world and the hereafter. And Allah Almighty told us about a man. A man who disbelieves in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he's distant for hellfire later on. He's a follower of shaitan, God forbid. He had good company, good companions before. And they were trying so hard to save him. Calling him to goodness. Come, be with us, follow us. However, he refused. So he lost. Here, what, what we are talking is that you being a companion, one of the most important aspects of you to save your companion. Not only make him happy in this world. And this way you are tricking him. It's like if, for example, if you are a student, and you have, you, there are two students who are companions of each other, one of them is bad, and the other one is halfway through, or he is attached to his companion, so him, there is no need to study or anything, this is just rubbish, you will pass, or even if you don't pass, so what? You can go or, over, giving him bad advice. But if you are a good companion, you should give him good advice. You should encourage him to do what is right, to be patient, and to persevere on goodness. And this way you will be a good companion. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us this example of them. We have multiple such uh, examples. The most outstanding example of a person who benefited his companion so much is the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa So he tried so hard to save his people and humanity at large. And he did succeed. He succeeded in saving the majority of people at that time of his time, his places, wherever he was. But some people insisted on the other way around. Now those who followed him, the Messenger وسلم, guided him to the right path. So much so, they became the best chosen people after the prophets and messengers. The Sahaba, we call them Sahaba for the same one, companion of the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Allah Almighty praised them for this in the Holy Quran, promised them goodness in this world and the hereafter. When they followed him, they succeeded in this world and the hereafter. They started achieving so much on the religious aspect and on the worldly matters. Until the Islamic civilization led the world, the entire humanity. And science and technology and achievements on all levels. Historians mention that this is the best civilization ever, full stop. Because it didn't succeed only on the worldly matters. There were many that succeeded 
like them or probably more or just less, whatever it might be. And there were others who succeeded also in spirituality, but they missed the worldly matters. However, in Islam, they combined them together. So the achievement, the worldly achievement did not affect the dignity of a human being and their welfare and their human relationship and social relationship. All of them worked together. So it achieved the best on both of them without affecting or negatively affecting people. So nowadays, for example, we have successful countries, extremely successful, for example, in innovation and technology and so on, but in the social level, it has one of the highest levels of suicide. So you, you have achieved material things and you have lost human being. That doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. So you have to have both together. This is what the Islamic civilization provided. Now, interestingly, out of all the companions of the Messenger وسلم, one of them stands out mentioned as a companion of the Messenger وسلم, in the Holy Quran. That is Abu Bakr And there is a story behind it. This was during the Hijrah. Abu Bakr wanted to immigrate to Medina when the Messenger وسلم, asked the Sahaba in Mecca after their torture to immigrate. So he wanted to immigrate. The Messenger وسلم, told him to wait hoping that something will come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Messenger ﷺ was not given permission to leave. A Prophet or Messenger is not allowed to leave until Allah Almighty gave him permission. Unlike what Yunus ﷺ, when he became upset with his people and they refused and rejected all his efforts to follow and obey and worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he left them. He got angry and he left them. But for that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke, why did you leave? Who gave you permission to leave? So he had no permission. So the Messenger وسلم, hoped that Abu Bakr will be with him because they were friends even before Islam. Abu Bakr was the friend of the Messenger وسلم, a close friend even before Islam. Later on, the Messenger وسلم, one afternoon came to the house of Abu Bakr and he said, Oh, Abu Bakr, Allah Almighty gave me permission to immigrate. What was the thing that was in the mind of Abu Bakr وسلم? One word. As-Sahba, O Messenger of Allah Almighty, I want to be your companion. Allow me to be your companion in this. The Messenger of Allah said, As-Sahba. Okay, companionship it is. Companionship it is. Allah Almighty mentioned this when they were in the cave together, and Abu Bakr was very frightened that they are going to find them. They reached to the opening of the cave. Allah Almighty told us what the Messenger وسلم, said, إِذْ يَقُولُ لِصَاحِبِهِ لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا When the Messenger وسلم, is saying to his companion, Abu Bakr radiallahu an, don't be sad for Allah Almighty is with us. So he's mentioned as the companion of the Messenger وسلم, outstanding figure, how much he benefited from the companionship of the Messenger وسلم. What is required from a companion is that uh, by the way, Abu Bakr was also praised by the Messenger وسلم, himself. He said, the, the most person on earth who has favors upon me in his companionship and in his money and property is Abu Bakr Had I to choose any close friend among the people beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Khalil, I would have chosen Abu Bakr the Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the messenger, uh, is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the Khalil of the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa What is required from the companion is goodness. Try to do goodness to your companion, the best you can. Try to benefit him in any way you can. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he mentioned doing goodness to different categories of people, among them Allah Almighty mentioned the companion. The one who is close to you, close to you even, even materialistically living beside you or close to you in the relationship. The companion. Do goodness to your companion. The Messenger وسلم, say the best among the companions in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are those who are best to their companions. I mean in the relationship don't be selfish. Don't think only about yourself. What am I getting from this relationship? No. Think, what goodness can I do to my companion in this? That is how you'll become the best among them in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You want to benefit only in this world? No need to do that. But if you are thinking about pleasing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have to change your compass. 
It is how much you are giving, not how much you are taking from this relationship. This way, Allah Almighty will love you more. I will give you more as well. One of the best benefit to benefit uh, your companion is knowledge. Try to share them with them the knowledge, teach them something that they benefit from, whether in this world or in the hereafter. And also, as a good companion, you should also benefit from your companion. Because no person is perfect. And no matter how good and great you might be, your companion can benefit you a lot. Because he is thinking in another way. He might be seeing things you don't see. And to give us an example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the story of Musa alayhi salam, the best creature of Allah Almighty at his time. Kalimullah, Allah Almighty speaks with him directly. That the angels. One of the five Ulil Azm among the prophets and messengers from Allah Almighty. The best, the top five messengers from Allah Almighty. And yet, when he became the companion of the good guy, the good servant of Allah Almighty, Sayyid Al Khadr, some narration. In some narration, he's not even a prophet or messenger. Some of them say he might be a prophet. But no matter what, he is not up to Musa alayhi salam for sure. Yet, Musa alayhi salam says, do you allow me to be your companion? Provided that you are going to teach me from your knowledge. I want to be your companion. However, my condition is that you should teach me. I want to learn from you. Can you understand why Allah Almighty is mentioning this? This is also in Surah Al-Kahf. It's not about who you are. It's not about how much knowledge you have from Allah Almighty. For sure, Musa salam had lots and lots and lots of knowledge. However, there is one aspect that he does not know much about. And Allah Almighty taught it to Al-Khadr. He did not teach it to Musa salam. But Musa salam was eager to seek knowledge. So he wanted to learn more. So I was thinking, is there anyone who knows more in the whole creation of Allah Almighty? Allah Almighty told him, yes. One of my servants know more than you. So that is why he went to all that, all these lengths, just to learn. So when you are in any relationship, try to learn from the other person. It's not always you or your opinion. Let them also present their opinions. Sometimes they might give you good opinions, good ideas. You are not thinking about them. So that is a very important lesson that we understand from this story between Musa alayhi salam and Al-Khadr. Now, uh, the guidance in Islam is that you should always be with good companionship and avoid bad companionship because they affect you. They affect you in this world and they affect you in the hereafter. Now, Allah Almighty gave us examples, even that example was given as an advice to the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Be patient and guide yourself to be patient with those who remember Allah Almighty day and night, the Sahaba. They are poor. They are persecuted in, in, in their, in their uh, place of stay and so on. But they are worshippers of Allah Almighty. They are good people. So Allah Almighty is saying to the Messenger you have to be patient with them. Stay with them. These are your companions. And Allah Almighty forbade the Messenger وسلم, or warned him from being with those who are away from Allah Almighty. Because that is the ultimate. Your companion, if he's benefiting you in this world, but taking you away from Allah Almighty, what gain are you gaining? Nothing. If you lost Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you have lost everything. Useless. But if you gain the love and pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, love and pleasure from Allah Almighty, you have gained everything. You don't have to worry about what you lost. So that is about the hereafter. Now, Allah Almighty told us the example of a person in the hereafter who has transgressed against himself and he's crying <coughs> and biting himself in regret. Why did I not follow the Messenger وسلم? Why did I took so and so as a companion, close friend? He misguided me away from Allah Almighty. Why? So ask yourself this question now. Because the friends will benefit you, not in this world, even in the hereafter. 
and the hereafter, the companions, people who were close to each other, when they are in paradise, they will start checking, where is so-and-so, where is so-and-so, unless they miss some of their friends. They were with us. They used to perform salah with us in the masjid. They used to fast with us, go to hajj with us. Whatever goodness they used to do together, where are they? We're missing them. They are checking, they find them in hellfire, God forbid. They have done something, they deserve hellfire now. They will intercede for them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Saying, our Lord, they are our companions. They were our friends in this world. They were with us. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will get them out of hellfire because of their companions. So that is how important it is to be with good companions. The final point is that some questions coming from some people say, so, okay, if I am the good companion, so it means I am being a companion of bad people. They are less than me, including a person who might be in hellfire. Shouldn't I leave them and find some good companions? Companionships are many levels. The ruling or the general rule in any companionship is that if, because in a companionship you might be the one who is uh, affecting others or you might be the one being affected. So it depends on your personalities, your wisdom, your ability to guide and so on. So if in that relationship you are making them better people or decreasing their evil and bad deeds, then you may continue in this relationship. If on the other hand, your good deeds are becoming less and less when you are with them, or your bad deeds are increasing when you are with them, you should stay away from them. So it depends on how much you are affecting, how much you are being affected. If you are able to save them, this is one of the best things to do. And you will get, inshallah, sadaqah charity, continuous charity for you as much as they are benefiting from that and anybody who benefits from them later on. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us among the good friends who are good for their companions. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us good companions that will benefit us in this world and in the hereafter. Ameen. Wa sallallahu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi